there's a new book out. It's called The World's Richest Man, and it was inspired. It is the life story of Jerry Woman. Uh, it is told to Joseph Bockel and Richard Bockel, the, um, the authors. But he is um, known for his great involvement in Philly sports, including a, a, um, a stint in the early 60s and mid-60s uh, as the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles. I was really intrigued to find out that not only were you so involved in the in, in the development of the Eagles, but also that you played a role in the development of NFL films, which, as we all know, is now an American institution. What role did you play? The role I played was that Pete Rozell, who was the commissioner at that time, had, before I got in there, came up to a vote for the league, and they turned it down. And Pete asked me if I'd bring it up again when I got in, which I did. And the thing was that each owner had to put in approximately $10,000, and that was a tough thing to do then. <clears throat> but in any event, I finally got everybody to agree by telling them. One of the guys said, one of the owners said, let's not do it. They don't even have a place to work out of. So I said, well, I'll tell you what. If we can approve it here, I'll buy a building, and they can go in there as a the tenant. And that got the approval. Why did you sense that NFL films, the concept of filming each of the games and doing play-by-play -play and then showing it again whenever possible to the American public, why did you feel that that would be so successful? Well, Ed Sable, who was the father of Steve, <coughs> Ed Sable was such a workhorse and he had such a grasp on things that I knew he would be successful. And I can assure you, if I didn't have a role in anything, and then getting it started, they would have been a success with or without me. Well, you know what? We have a little surprise for you because we have a surprise guest on the telephone joining us now, and it is someone who needs very little introduction, particularly in this neck of the woods. It's the president of NFL Films, Steve Sable. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm hey. doing great. And I, I just would like to add what uh, Jerry said, that uh, my father wouldn't be up uh, for a whole possible Hall of Fame induction if it wasn't for Jerry's kindness and Jerry's vision along with my father's because when we started, as Jerry said, we didn't have a building. And that my father was really concerned about it. And he talked to Jerry, and it was just a matter of fact. Well, Ed, I got a building, and, and my dad says, well, Ed, Jerry, I don't know whether I can afford it. And Jerry said, don't worry about it. We'll take, we'll, we'll take care of that later. And I don't even know whether we ever paid rent <laughs> on that whole building. But... Um, Jerry Woolman, to me, I, well, for all of us in Philadelphia, when Jerry owned the Eagles, he had a nickname to all of us. And, I, you know, we were, I was 20 years old, 23, and Jerry was maybe not much older, but because of who he was, uh, you know, we were always a little intimidated. But Jerry, Jerry's nickname was Call Me Jerry. <laughs> He'd always say, Mr. Woolman, can we do this? And it was always Call Me Jerry. And that, in, in many ways, epitomized the kind of person that he was. And, you know, I, I've read that there's a St. Paul wrote that there are angels living among, among us. Mm -hmm. And if, if so, uh, Jerry Woolman is one of the people that he's talking about. Because in, in my 50 years with the NFL, I've never met a more generous, thoughtful person than Jerry oh. Woolman. Oh, that's great, Steve. Thank, thank you, Steve. You know, it's interesting because when I said hello to him in the green room and I said hello, Mr. Woolman, he said the same thing, call me Jerry. So not <laughs> much has Jerry. changed in 60 years, right? Uh, that's right. <laughs> thank All you, right. Steve. Steve, one thing that we know has not changed is the success of NFL films. It continues in 2011 to be bigger and better than ever. So we, can, we um, extend our best wishes for continued success to you, and thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you, I'd Steve. I'd be happy to be there. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thanks. great. Now, I'm sure that you would get <laughs> lots and lots of testimonials like that because from reading the book it seemed like not only did you say call me Jerry but you said to people call me if I can help you was that one of those values that you brought with you from Western Pennsylvania that you tried to extend into business I, I always felt whether if I got lucky I wanted to share it with other people and it's never been a problem for me then or now to sit down and talk to people and see if I can help them and uh, I love doing it. And okay. a lot of people uh, benefited as a result of your assistance. Not only were you um, involved in football, but then opportunities presented themselves to you to get involved in some of the other classic Philadelphia sports. Um, 
Philadelphia Flyers, for example, which didn't exist when, when you first got into football, you actually had an opportunity to be part of the, the foundation of that. Well, I wanted to be very much a part of Philadelphia. And when I heard that the, there was a possibility for Philadelphia to get a franchise, even though I had no real desire to be involved in hockey, I felt that Philadelphia was going to be a big league city. It had to be represented in every sport. And uh, uh, Bill Putnam and I made a presentation before the board of directors, and they were leading on giving the franchise to Baltimore because we didn't have an arena. And I said, if you give us a conditional franchise, I will guarantee you that we'll have an arena there within a year. And the arena to which you were referring is what Philadelphians now know as the Spectrum. It's the Spectrum Arena. Okay, so now your tentacles are reaching just a little <laughs> bit further now. Now you're actually promising to bring what we know as the Spectrum to Philadelphia as well. And we completed it in 15 months. Wow. And the r person really deserves credit for that was Paul D'Ortono, who was a councilman, and Mayor Tate. They felt it was great for the city. Without them, we could have never had the arena finished. At one point, you also played a, a role in some way, shape, or form with the Sixers and with the, the stadium where the Phillies played, uh, Connie Mack. Well, the lease was running out on the Phillies, and assuming that they couldn't stay there, they'd have no place to play. So I bought, the Con I bought Connie Mack Stadium and told them they'd stay there as long as they want. Wow. See, I don't think people have an idea of all of this. Now, when we talk about the rags to riches, we've been talking about all of the riches. And you can see that if you're involved with all of these professional sports um, opportunities, that you obviously were a very wealthy man and able to, to sure, yeah, yeah. attain that. But then you lost it. And the question is, how and why? And, and what did you do when it, when it all tumbled away? Well, to take about four chapters out of the book, Lynn, uh, what happened is that uh, there was a foundation failure at the Hancock Center. Oh, now we should Chicago. probably point out to people that while you were still the owner of the, of the Eagles, you were interested in still his first love of construction, and you were trying to build what then would have been the tallest building in Chicago, the John Hancock Building. Actually, it would have been at that time, had we done the original plan, the tallest building in the world. And again, I did that as a favor to a friend of mine. I had no desire to do anything in Chicago, but he needed some help out there, Ted Daly. And I went out there and agreed to build that building. And that's another long story in itself. But right, the, but there were problems <coughs> with the building with that the foundation. ultimately ended up costing you your fortune because your well, name and your finances were all tied in with its What happened? The loss was about $20 million. And if... I wasn't put under the pressure by the banks and everything else. I could have lived through it, but there was so much pressure. I ended up, I had to sell the Flyers, the Spectrum, the Eagles, and everything else. All right, we're going to find out the kind of impact that that had on a man who loved sports, loved his Eagles, and in fact, loving helping other people, but then wasn't able to do any of those things because he lost his own personal fortune. We'll find out how he went from rags to riches to rags and where he is now. Stay with us.